Hey, good day to you, ABU gamers. My name is Jay. I've been doing a series of articles on our website called Growing to War, teaching beginner gamers how to get into wargaming games like Warhammer 40K and all sorts of other cool stuff. You see it on the shelves out there. You think, oh, I, I don't want to get involved, but it's so cool. Well, I'm going to teach you how to get involved without having to break the bank. This week, we are learning about Kill Team, a game from Games Workshop. Seminal, of course, for their Warhammer 40k product, Warhammer Fantasy, Age of Sigmar. Games Workshop is a titan in the games business. They know what they're doing, and Kill Team is really great. It's super popular right now, and it's super easy to pick up. So we're going to go over the basics of what makes Kill Team, Kill Team. All right, so... One of the best things about Kill Team is you can play it in a very limited space. If you just have your kitchen table, a few cans, a toaster, you can play with that setup. You just need 30 inches by 22 inches, which is perfect for a dining table in almost every home in the country. And then you can get, a, get together a few pieces of terrain just to improvise at first if you're just getting started out. The good news is if you can still track down that Kill Team starter set somewhere, which unfortunately is out of print at most game stores. It does come with a bunch of really cool terrain that's easy to build, easy to paint if you want, and makes for a neat battlefield. This is a selection of terrain from the ABU Games War Room Holy Terra, just a couple doors down from where we're filming this clip. We've got a bunch of terrain that's made by Games Workshop here, like these towers, these storage crates, this cool little guy here, and some stuff that's been made by our local gamers. This building off here, another storage crate, some cool tank traps. It's really easy to have terrain ready to play Kill Team, and it's really important to have terrain ready for playing Kill Team because cover is what the game is all about. So, you've got your space that's 30 inches by 22 inches. Again, really easy to use. Next, you need yourself your teams. The Kill Team Starters Rules Book is available here at ABU Games. You can get your hands on that and it's got everything you need to know about playing. It has the rules set up, it has the points values for the models that you're going to use, and of course, all the different armies and their special rules. And really, that's the only thing you need to play Kill Team. You don't need any of this extra stuff, it just makes it cooler. Once you've got that, you get your models together. I am going to be playing my Death Watch veterans this week. Joe is going to be playing against me with his orc kill team. It's going to be a lot of fun. Space orcs are crazy random soccer hooligans running around in space with machine guns, rocket ships, and giant robots. Death Watch Space Marines are the elite of the elite Space Marines. They are highly trained in disposing of alien scum. They're the greatest warriors the galaxy has ever seen. And they're super customizable because each Death Watch veteran comes from a different chapter of Space Marines. Once we've got things set up here, we're going to show you how we did deployment, and then we'll play a turn or so of Kill Team. We'll go over some of the basics on the rules. So when you start your Kill Team game up, you're going to build up a roster of warriors to represent your band of infiltrators and saboteurs and awesome little, you know, butt kicker guys running around on this planet behind the scenes during a major war. These are a small splinter group of your larger force accomplishing vital tasks like assassinations, intelligence gathering, sabotage, all sorts of cool stuff like this. In Kill Team, you build a master roster of 20 heroes. You give them names, you give them custom equipment, you make them really cool. And then when you play your games of Kill Team, you will choose from that list of 20 guys the people that meet a points value preset by both players to represent the force dedicated to this scenario. Today, I'm playing a force of about seven Death Watch Space Marines from different chapters with different specialties. So this is my kill team. I've got my Death Watch Space Marines here. I have my Watch Sergeant, Sergeant Butters. He is from the Relictors Factor. Uh, he's actually a character model from another branch of the Warhammer models, but I'm using him today. He's got Leadership Specialty, which lets him give uh, influence to his uh, friendly fellow Space Marines here. He's armed with a Xenoface Sword and a Combi Flamer. This is my Combat Specialist from the White Scars chapter. He's got a Power Sword and a Bolt Pistol. Being a Combat Specialist gives him an extra attack in melee. 
This is my heavy weapon specialist from the Salamanders chapter. He has a heavy flamer on the model. Today he's going to be using an Infernus heavy bolter, which is a flamer and a heavy bolter at the same time. It's really cool. He's my heavy specialist, so he gets to move and shoot his heavy weapon without penalties. And lastly, we have my Blood Angel Space Marine here, who is my veteran sergeant. He is very resistant to most of the qualities that cause you to take nerve tests and lose your gumption in battle. Then I've got my three remaining Space Marines here in my list. They're not specialists. They're there to keep the points covered and to make results happen. From the Red Templars chapter, the Imperial Fists, and the Raven Guard. We've got cool Kill Team dice that you can get from Games Workshop. We've got cool Kill Team tokens that you can get from Games Workshop. You'll need six-sided dice, another dice to represent command points, and then tape measure. And that's really it. Once you've got all those things, you've got a Kill Team that's playable. Now let's take a look at what Joe is going to be playing with. Joe's using the war mob here of Boss Knob Getrekt Scrub. Getrekt is armed with a big choppa, which is really, really hurty in melee combat. Plus, he's got a combi Scorcha, so he's got a shooter on there and a flamethrower. That thing takes lives, man. Here's his specialists. We've got Wiznog Gitzappa. He is the comm specialist. He can improve the ballistic skill of an orc by one if they're within six inches of him. Just one dude, that's all it takes. And believe you me, that makes a huge difference for the orcs. Here we have our heavy weapon specialist. We have lead spitter right here with Mr. Gubbins on his back. He's the heavy weapons with a big shooter. He's going to be unloading bullets all over the place. And we have Goreheap the Bull, also a combat specialist, just like over there with the Space Marines. He gets that extra attack in melee. So you've got all the rest of Joe's force here. We've got a couple commandos down front. We've got a Luda with a death gun, which puts out a lot of hurt. We've got a Burna boy here. He is awesome with his flamethrower that works as a flamethrower, but also as a special melee weapon. And we got a couple generic boys here, one with a uh, Slugga and Shapa, one with a Shuda, and then some Grots, the all important Grots. Why? Because they can take the bullets for you. That's what they're for. Where our points are matched up here, we're roughly equal. If I was over his total for models and points spent, he'd get extra command points for it, but we're pretty closely matched. So next we're gonna go to deployment and get things on the board. So Joe was lucky enough to pick up his orcs and his starter for Kill Team from one of Games Workshop's boxes. Those are also limited production, so if you can find them, I recommend grabbing them. They come with the orc data cards or other Kill Team data cards that you need. They come with their custom stratagems and they come with a couple custom scenarios for that. This one comes with the Megapire narrative play mission. It's a really cool scenario where the orcs are trying to build, blow up an ammo dump and attract a bunch of guys so that they can have a good solid fight. So it's got the different rules for playing out the scenario and custom rules for deployment, which is what we're going to use. This calls for the defenders, in this case, my space marines, to be deployed around a central point while the orcs close in from the outside. The orcs' goal is to go to these objective markers here, here, and here, and set explosives. Once they've got all those explosives set, the orcs are going to win this match. But I've got to stop. So we're going to show you how you deploy your models. All right. I'm excited to set these up. Uh, how do you get started with this, Jay? So in Kill Team, unless the rules specify otherwise, you're going to alternate deployment, which means one player goes with one guy, next player goes with the other guy, until everybody's done putting their dudes out. So what we're going to do is roll six siders Sweet. and see who goes first. I got two. I also, also two. got a two. So when you match up, you roll off again. I got a one. I also got a one. Wow, that's going and going. I do like these kill team dice though. They have the custom chapter symbols on one side and the general kill team symbol on the other. Orcs have that cool skull. I got a five this time. I got a three. Okay, tell you what. I'm gonna go first because I don't want to worry about the orcs controlling where I go. I'm gonna start things out with, let's say my Raven Guard battle brother here. We'll say he's up on the roof of the building doing sentry duty, keeping watch on the perimeter. And now it's Joe's turn. Sweet. So I, according to the rules, have to be 15 inches away from the center point. Exactly right. And that's going to be right about there. So you want to make sure that you're closing in from all sides on my unsuspecting space marines. Let's see. Oh, OK. So I could be theoretically on top of this building. That'd be a really great point. Down, right? That'd be a really great place to put one of your uh, gunner orcs. Like 
uh, lead spitter there with Mr. Gubbins or yeah, one of the yeah. Ludas. He looks gnarly. I like yeah, that. he's pretty awesome. He's got plenty of range with that big shooter. It's got 36 inches, which is coincidentally enough bigger than the whole table. So he's Ooh. got range to any target he wants to take a shot at. Perfect. It's I like my that. turn to go. We're gonna say uh, lead spitter there just tripped the perimeter alarms, and the first guy closest to the door was well. We'll do my my basic vanilla Imperial Fist Marine coming out this building door here. Also, conveniently enough, screened by the building from being shot at by that big shooter. Excellent. Um, hmm. So do you have any like tips for deployment? I'm well, pretty new to this, so I don't know. In orcs thrive on melee, so they want to be able to get close to distances really fast. You want to put somebody who's going to be able to survive that. So I would say put out one of your, uh, your co orc commandos. They're sneaky troopers. They benefit from extra points of cover whenever they get it. And they're really good at killing things up close and personal. I would put him in one of these buildings here or somewhere close by that he's obscured from the Space Marine shooting. Sweet. Thanks. Okay. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put him. Try to sneak around that corner there. That should be pretty good. All right, we're gonna take turns finishing out our deployment, and then we'll come back and start that first turn. Woo! All right, so here's the scenario we're playing out. It is a narrative mission that, like I said, comes with the Gitrogs Boys box set from Games Workshop, which comes with five Ludas or Burnas, however you want to build them out. It comes with special cards for those guys. It comes with the stratagem cards for orcs, which are going to come in handy. And it also comes with two special scenarios. The one we're going to be playing is the Mega Pyre. The orcs are trying to set off a series of explosions here to set off this ammo dump and draw in a bigger crowd to fight. So what we are going to do is take that first turn roll and see who goes first. In order to dis uh, decide who plays first, you will roll 2d6 and compare the total. And it is worth noting, as uh, I have played many, many games now of Kill Team, I have only ever won initiative four times. <laughs> I got a total of four. I got five. You got five, so the orcs get to go first. Sweet. So, orc movement is a little slower than everybody else. They're big, they're burly, they're essentially gorillas with machine guns. So orcs only move five inches at a time, unless they're commandos who move six, or the grots, those little guys down there who also move six. Okay. So in this scenario, again, uh, we do not alternate. Joe is gonna move all of his troops at once. Interesting. Okay, so like the guys that I have posted up on these towers, uh -huh. I might not want to move, right? So That's they can right. Rain down bullets. Uh, they actually are going to be armed with some weapons that basically benefit from them not shooting or moving, of course, when they want to shoot. So you can choose to move some of these guys here. This guy can move wherever he wants. He has the heavy special rules, which means that he can move and shoot heavy weapons or advance and shoot assault weapons without penalties. So that's pretty great for him. But he does want to stay within six inches of the comm specialist, so he can use that comm specialist rule and boost his ballistic skill to a four. Excellent. So for someone who has no idea what they're doing, where would you recommend I start with movement? Today? All right. So what you're probably going to want to start to do, since you have orcs that are theoretically close enough to get into melee on the first turn, you might want to do a charge with this guy over here or with this dude here. On the other hand, that's a flamethrower over there. Flamethrowers hit automatically whenever you roll Overwatch. So you might not want to get into combat with the guy with the flamethrower, but this guy is going to get his Overwatch roll if you charge him. Uh, and he only hits on sixes, so you have a better than average chance of getting in there. How if far you, can the orcs move again? The orcs will roll a charge distance of 2d6, and because of their special rule, here we go, if they don't make it into the charge, they get to roll again. Ooh. Well, what if I'm feeling risky? I think I want to charge with my commando. Okay, your commando's gonna charge him. That means I will take my Overwatch roll first. Okay. All right, so we're gonna need that tape measure real quick. He is going to measure out the distance of his weapon. Now, his weapon is a 24 inch gun. Ordinarily, that means he could shoot this far out. It's basically the whole board from where he's standing. And if his target is within half that distance, not only does he get to fire twice because it's a rapid fire weapon, but he suffers no range penalty to his attack roll. Of course, that doesn't matter. This is Overwatch. So 
So he's gonna roll these two shots, because he can shoot that rapid fire weapon twice. And can it go through the building, my guy's behind? Actually, you know what? You are absolutely right, Joe. I can't fire Overwatch, it's something I can't see. <laughs> but you can totes my goats charge somebody that you can't see. So grab your 2d6 and roll those guys, and we'll see if it beats the target number. We've got six, six. total inches. It's not gonna be enough to get in assault with him. You have to get within one inch of this guy. Your best, you, you're gonna need at least a nine. So I would say use that here we go rule and roll those again. All right, here we go. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, uh, 11 inches worth of movement. He's up in his face. Turn one, Orc Assault. Yes. Other things you can do with your guys involve readying actions, which means they wait until the shooting starts and they start it themselves. So you can take one of these tokens here, if you wanna hand me that bag, and ready a shot with one of your orcs as he draws a bead on a space marine. And the guy who's gonna benefit from that most, probably this big hurdy dude up here. And I would say the little guy back here. Yeah, because he could help his homie out, right? Uh, yeah, well, he can't shoot a guy who's in an assault. Oh, okay, okay. But he can shoot the guy with the flamethrower. Yeah, that seems... All right, we're gonna put that right here next to him so we know what he's done. We've got a couple other tokens that we can throw out. Let's uh, finish Joe's movement here and see what things look like. All right, so Joe's moves are done. We tried to assault with the other commando over here. He got burned down by the flamer. Uh, this guy decided not to charge. He's just moving up. He's just gonna shoot him with his pistol. And here comes the Berna with his flamethrower over here. This guy's staying put. He's gonna make a ready to action so he can shoot at the guy with the power sword. Get Zappa over here, staying so he's close enough with him to do his special comms boost. And we've got the Luda over here, who's also going to be getting ready with that readied action. And then we've got our big war boss here. Well, not a war boss, not yet. He's on the road to it. This is our boss knob, Getrekt. He just advanced up here, but because he's got assault weapons, he can still shoot those. It's just with the absolutely wretched penalty, and he's brought all three of his little grot friends with him to keep him safe. It's my turn to move, so I'm also going to start a charge. My captain here is going to declare a charge against Getrekt. So, Getrekt gets to shoot both his shooter ammo and his flamer. So Joe, if you would please roll a d6 and see how many shots you get with that Scorcha. Let's check it out. Boom. Four, Four. shots with the Scorcha. All right, let's roll those for, roll the uh, two shots with the shooter to see if you hit. It's Overwatch, so you're gonna need a six to hit him. Just on one die? Two dice. Two dice, okay. You can get six on two dice, right? Sure. You got six on one of them, so you get one shot off with your shooter as well. Sick. So, we're gonna move to the wound phase. In the wound phase, you compare the strength of the weapon to the toughness of the target. Now, Getrekt here has a really mighty flamethrower. That's a strength five flamethrower. Okay. And it's a strength four shooter. You got one hit with the shooter, so we'll use, go ahead and roll those separately. This is the wound with the shooter. He got a three. Unfortunately, I have a toughness three, or a toughness four, so this space marine is not injured by that shooter bullet that miraculously hit. <laughs> Let's uh, see what Getrek's flamer does. That's one wound. You got three more to go, man. You hit him four times. That's two wounds. It's not looking good for my sergeant. I get one more, right? You get two more. Oh, two more? That one does not wound. Come on. Oop. That's three wounds with that flamethrower, which Dang. means my watch sergeant has to roll three armor saves. He has a pretty good set of armor, but the orcs have a bonus with that save, uh, with the damage on that Scorcha, so I've got to roll fours. I got two successes and one failure. All right, now comes the thing. This is the injury roll. The injury roll takes your guys out of action. And if you roll a four or better on one of these dice, my sergeant's done before he gets to fight. Come on. Yes. A four. I've made a dreadful mistake. <laughs> Actually, Orc wait, oh, oh, nope. I had to check the rules. He has another wound, which means he instead takes a flesh wound. Oh, I got too excited for a nothing. A flesh wound decreases the efficiency of your fighter on the battlefield. It reduces his attack skills and other stuff. 
but I will, let's see how close I get on my charge. I got five inches of movement. Did I make it? That looks pretty close. It looks pretty close. Yes, yep. I managed to charge. Get tracked. So we'll see what that looks like in melee. All right, let's see you do a couple other moves and we'll get back to things. All right, so my movement phase is done here. I charged out of this building and went right at that uh, commando here. He's not gonna get a piece of him by himself uh, with my combat specialist. I've got these guys up here on the building top with ready to actions. And of course I made the mistake of getting my commander wounded by charging up there. He has a really cool rule though called transhuman physiology. He gets to ignore the first flesh wound he takes every game. I wish I could do that in real life. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> All right, so we are on the ready phase. Now, since Joe went first, Joe gets to choose to go first. Uh, and so he's probably going to go with one of his orcs here. Yeah, I want to shoot you in the face. Here. Looks like uh, we're going to get some uh, bullets from Lead Spitta here. All right, so Lead Spitta has a ballistic skill of five, which means he would only ordinarily hit on a five plus. But we have Git Zappa, the comms boy, right there. So he's going to improve Lead Spitta's ballistic skill to a four plus, which means he's hitting 50% of the time on my Space Marines, which honestly, you're gonna need, boy. All right, so how many do I roll? You're gonna roll three dice, because he has a cool trick he's gonna play. All right, so, roll them right here. I got not good. Not good at all, but you at least got one hit out of that, which is pretty great. Now he's gonna use two rolls. One, as a heavy weapon specialist, lets him add an extra shot to any attack he makes Ooh. with his shooting gun. So go ahead and roll one more die. Thank you. Pew! And he hits with it. Yes. The other rule he's going to use is a special orc stratagem. That is the Daka 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 stratagem, which lets him flat out make another shooting attack after this one resolves. So he uses both of his command points to do that. Pew, pew. So, let's roll the wounds. We got two hits out of that. Now my Space Marines have a toughness of four. His weapon has a strength of four. We're gonna roll those two wounds and see if they can inflict a wound on my Space Marine. We got six one three. six and one three. The three doesn't do anything, but that six sure does. That causes me to have to roll an armor save with my Death Watch Space Marine. Death Watch Space Marines have a three plus armor save, which means if I roll a three or better on this die, he doesn't really care about that injury. Oh. I rolled a three, he saves it. But Daka 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 lets him shoot the three initial shots again. <laughs> and he can choose any number of targets. He can put, the more hits he gets, you put one shot on him, one shot on him, one shot on him, dump them all into one guy. What you gonna do, Joe? I'm gonna dump them all in that. All right, gonna take out that Blood Angel veteran. Let's see what happens. Still hitting on fours, thanks to the comms boy. Ugh, just one hit. Just one hit this time. Let's make it count, Joe. Strength five versus a four. You're gonna wound on threes. So how many do I roll? Just the one. Just the one, right, okay. There's four. another wound. Do I save? Uh -huh. I do. Ah, that tough space marine armor. You let me down, yep. bro. So he's gone. We're gonna flip over his little indicator token from the aiming mark to the gunfire mark to show that he's active. Now it's my turn to go with one of my ready dudes. I'm gonna try to shoot this orc here in this building uh -oh. with my Raven Guard guy. Now, I think he's outside of 12 inches. He is indeed outside of 12 inches from my Raven Guard guy, so I don't get to rapid fire with my gun, and I'm at a minus one penalty for shooting at him. He also has this little piece of fencing in front of him, which is gonna grant him an, a point of cover which also subtracts one from my ability. I have a ballistic skill of three with my Space Marine because they're the coolest dudes in the galaxy and some of the finest warriors you can find. Psh, so he would hit with a three ordinarily, but now, unfortunately, with all that cover and that distance, he's on the same footing as the orcs. So I need a five to hit with my super heroic warrior, which I didn't get. Ooh. That boy's day continues to thrive. In fact, I think it's probably his turn to return the favor, don't you? Yeah. All right. He has a weapon that's an Assault 2 weapon. He doesn't care about rapid fire distance. He's, as long as he's within 24 inches of this Space Marine, he can shoot it twice. It is still more than 12 inches though, so he's at another minus one. 
I don't have enough cover between me and him to benefit from that cover roll. So he's only at the minus one, but still, as an orc, it puts him at a six or better. So he's got to roll six or better on two dice to hit my space marine. And I just roll the two? Just roll the two. So I have to roll... Sixes. Sixes, yeah. It happens, trust me. Come on. We oh. got a five and a three. Would have been good, didn't quite make it. We're gonna take the rest of our overwatch here with our ready to actions and come back to things in the main shooting phase. That guy's scared though. Bullets flying past his head. He's a space marine. He knows no fear. Whatever, he's gonna know it. All right. So the ready to action phase has ended. We haven't flipped over our tokens quite yet, but uh, sadly, there were casualties on the Space Marine's behalf. <laughs> he had his uh, Luda over there get really lucky with his death gun, got three shots off with it, wounded the sergeant or the uh, veteran here once, and completely annihilated my brother from the Red Templars faction. Nothing but dust and a smoking pair of power greaves. <laughs> I tried to, my best to uh, return fire here, but of course, that Luda managed to take the life of that Space Marine before he could shoot. And I failed to hit that orc with the burna. Now we're on the main shooting phase, which is the next step in combat. We're going to start over here. Joe's boy on foot with the pistol is gonna to try to shoot my Raven Guard dude. So he's got one point of cover from the fencing, which means you're gonna hit on sixes. Orcs, not the greatest at shooting, just gonna say it. But it, they do have it where it counts. Usually orc shooting is overpowered, really hurty, and there's buckets of it. <laughs> so we're gonna shoot one pistol shot at that guy Hitting on a six. That's the other side of the coin. Ooh. Oh, off it goes in classic dice tradition. Completely off the table. Uh, yeah, four. we missed with that guy. He's done his. Die. He's done his ready to action, so he doesn't get to shoot in this phase anymore. Uh, we've got the War of the Flamers over here. My heavy flamer versus his Scorcha. So Ooh. my heavy flamer generates d6 attacks. His generates d3. I get five shots with my Heavy Flamer on my Salamander Battle Brother. Go ahead and roll that six-sider. A one or a two is one, two, a three or a four is two, oh, okay. yeah. and a five or six is three. So he gets three attacks back. So, Flamers are really cool, and they're especially nasty in Kill Team. You don't have to roll to hit with them. If you're within range, which is eight inches for most Flamers, you get to just hit. So <laughs> he has, you, uh, you have f uh, three root wounds against my four. We are on even footing for strength on these weapons. I got, ooh, three wounds on mine. And you got three wounds on yours. Oh. So now I roll armor saves and he rolls armor saves. Actually, you wouldn't roll armor saves because that's a heavy flamer. Oh, It's a minus one to your armor. So that orc's just taking these wounds. But no matter how many wounds I make, I only make one injury roll against Joe. But I have three armor saves to make. Oh, and I failed one, which is all it takes. So we're gonna roll dice to see if our characters are injured. I roll this die, if I roll a four or better, that orc is taken completely out of action. Likewise with the orc, if he gets a four or better, my space marine goes the way of the dodo. I got a four, <laughs> he got a four. Mutually assured destruction, bro. Boom. <sighs> Flamers out. Bye. This is gonna, they're just healing up, right? So yeah, gonna... yeah, that's it. There's absolutely nothing to the stench of burning flesh in the air. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the shooting phase, actually. All my guys were readied. Most of Joe's guys are in melee combat, except for this dude who just tried to charge and couldn't make a shooting attack. He tripped. He tripped. He decided he had better things to do. He uh, got distracted by something shiny as orcs are wont to do, which means we might as well start over here with the epic clash of this guy. All right, my captain and his knob. Sweet. Okay, we're gonna start the assault phase here with these guys, or fight phase, depending on what you want to call it. The epic clash between kill team leaders. We've got Gatrekt with his big choppa, my guy with his xenophase power sword. My guy gets three attacks, and because I charge this turn, I get to go first. That's pretty good. I got two hits. I got one six, and one four, against my melee skill of three. And so we would resolve the Xenophase sword. Let's see if it wounds. Oh, look at that! Nothing! I got a one and a two. <laughs> the orc lives to retaliate. Getrekt gets to come back with his big choppa. He also gets three attacks. 
He gets a plus one to his strength with this, so it's a strength six. He hits on three, so he hits with all three attacks. Boom. Chopping away. All right, so roll to see if you wound against my toughness of four. All three again? All three yeah. of those okay. guys. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Okay, oh my goodness gracious. Getrex just lays me to waste. That's two of those. I fail both of my saves. So, again, that doesn't cause any extra dice to be rolled here, because it's not a multiple damage weapon when he hits with that axe. But, we've got an interesting scenario here. I might ignore the wound for purposes of activating my guy, but you don't ignore the wound for purposes of killing my guy. You roll this, and you kill him on a three or better. All right, we can do it. Come on, get right. Boom. Or he would go down if I didn't use some of my stratagem points to use my armor is contempt. A death watch tactic. I roll a d6 for that wound, and if I roll a five plus, it goes away. Otherwise, the sergeant is gone. <laughs> I roll a two, down goes the sergeant. That's the end of our initial turn. It's actually been pretty bloody. We're gonna play another couple turns and come back to the game at turn four and see where things are. Yeah, get wrecked. So we're coming down to the end of the game here. It's been a bloody match. There's a lot of wounds spread around the table here. Woo. We've got nerve tests to make for some of these orcs and for some of these space marines here. Anybody who has a wound on here has to make a nerve test. You roll your die, compare it to a leadership stat that your character has. There's an orc dice for oh, you. Thank you. There's one of mine. If the result on the die is equal to the number of wounds on these orcs uh, plus the uh, guys over there in your dead pile, then your character is pinned and can't do nothing. So I got six dudes. In oh, hey, wait. Pile. We put that wound on Gitrek. We shouldn't have. He made that tough one. He's good. All right. So I'm going to roll for this space marine here. I have three dead space marines plus one wound plus I have one unshaken space marine right next to him. So the unshaken space marine and the wound wash each other out. The Space Marines have a pretty good leadership, so I've got a pretty good chance of making this for that Space Marine. I rolled a four, and just enough to make him in command. We've got this orc squatting on this objective here. He's got two wounds, Ooh. plus a bunch of dead orcs. He's all by his lonesome. Odds are not so hot. Yeah, well, so what do I have to roll? Roll that d6, and if you roll one, he should stay in the fight. A four. This orc is now panicked. Which means he gets one of these little tokens next to him. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. He can't attack. He can't fight back if he's charged. But he still is right next to that objective. Now, ordinarily, once we finish that phase, we move on. But we're on turn four, which means two things are going to happen. One, we would test to see if the game ends on its own. If we roll a four or better on that die, the game would end, and we'd compare victory points. It keeps going. But Joe here has orcs on all his objectives. He has two little grots right here. Getrekt, of course, dominating up front. And this guy, who was already parked there, the orcs have planted their explosives. Let's see what happens. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. dun. All right. At the end of a battle round, you can make one attempt to plant explosives, which you've done actually successfully with all of these guys. And uh, let's see. Ooh. Tell you what. Looks like. You have won, Joe. Yeah! These are going to count towards your explosives. You've been uh, squatting this one for this guy for like three turns. Game's yours, Joe. Oh, Way to sick. go. I may have a heap of dead orcs at my feet, but it looks like all the space marines in this bunker are going to blow up. <laughs> get wrecked. Absolutely. Hence, get wrecked scrub boss knob. MVP. Absolutely. He, uh, he kicked a big bucket of butts. Shot this guy up. Backed this guy away. He was a veteran, so if he'd been wounded, he would have been still cool, actually. They don't care with that veteran special rule about the wounds they've got on them for the purpose of making nerve tests. They're really great for holding objectives when you've got a veteran on specialist on your team. But it's been pretty cool. Tell you what, we'll tell you what we think of Kill Team and how much fun we had, and where you can get it here and how much. All right, so Kill Team's core manual available here at ABU Games on our website, in our store. You can buy all sorts of cool terrain expansions all the models you might need to play. Basic trooper kits from any branch, essentially, of the 40K universe can be used to build your kill team. And once again, you've got the rules broken down for how to build out a kill team using almost any faction in the 40K universe, 
except Sisters of Battle, which are coming later this year, and they'll probably have their kill team rules when that comes out. But anything else in here that you can play 40k, you can basically use for a kill team, which is flinging flinging awesome, because it means you can build endless variety out of this stuff. You can have Grots and Boys and Burnas and all sorts of cool stuff, neat Space Marines mixing the Primaris and the classic Power Armor Space Marines, and anything in between. You've got this guy here that you can pick up, we've got the terrain sets, we've got all sorts of cool stuff that can make Kill Team really fun to play by yourself. Plus, if you don't want to go to the work of getting the terrain together, ABU Games has a Kill Team League that meets Thursday nights here at our store in our wargaming room. We've got a pretty good group of folks here. A lot of us are veterans, a lot of us are new, all of us are glad to play with someone new. Speaking of people new, Joe's never played Kill Team before. He's got his orcs ready to go. I think he had fun. Joe, what'd you have fun? Oh man, yeah, this was a blast. Um, I was a little worried about it. Like, I've been painting uh, Warhammer and Warhammer 40k models since I was about seven. I've never actually really taken it to the table. And I think Kill Team was a super cool way to start out. Absolutely. Um, I really appeal, I mean, the, the squad-like combat really appeals to me. Moving around the terrain and figuring out how to ambush the Space Marines was a ton of fun. Um, I gotta say, I'm probably gonna build a couple of kill teams and play some more because, dang, that was cool. And flat out, I'm gonna say, the best thing about Kill Team is you can get started in this game for less than 100 bucks. That's a pretty darn good deal for any kind of game, let alone a war game. And once you've got some good-sized Kill Team stuff, it makes a pretty good entry point into the full-fledged world of Warhammer 40k, which who knows, we might go over in a future growing to war segment. So That'd be sweet, I'll build up my orcs. Absolutely. Once again, this has been Kill Team from Games Workshop, available now through abugames.com, and of course in our store here in Boise, Idaho. And this has been Growing to War. <laughs>